Hey, my friend, Adam here. And in this video, I wanna share with you some e-commerce marketing strategies I recently learned directly from the largest e-commerce company in the world, Amazon. See, I just got back from Amazon Accelerate, Amazon's premier annual conference to support independent sellers and fuel their growing businesses. It took place live in Seattle, but you could also stream it online for free from the comfort of your home, your office, your car, wherever you like streaming things from, really. And if you missed it, you can still catch the recordings online, so I'll make sure to put a link in the descriptions below this video. The conference offered three keynote sessions, breakout sessions personalized across seller experience levels, and multiple topics from building your brand to optimizing fulfillment operations, and I took a ton of notes some of which I want to share with you now that I think you're really going to find valuable, including some advertising tips from the top 10% of all Amazon advertisers. The two most important metrics every business should pay attention to. I've been talking about this one for years, so it was good to get a little backup here. And a few tips on how to maximize your sales for the holiday season. And what's especially good about these tips is that they're not just for the holidays, but can apply to pretty much any peak season or event in your business. They also had a drone. I mean, look at this thing. It's nuts. And a donut wall, which is exactly what it sounds like. A wall covered in donuts that you could just go up to and eat. Mind blown? I think so. But as cool as those were, this video isn't about drones or donuts. It's about making you more money. So let's start with tip number one, show me the money. Let's play a game. Imagine for a second there are two doors in front of you. Behind door number one, on the left, are all of your potential customers gathered together. I'm talking hundreds of millions of people who could, would, and want to buy from you. Enough people to make your business a raging success for years to come. On the other hand, behind door number two, on the right, there's nobody, like not a single customer. So which door are you going to choose? It's not a trick question, and the answer is obviously door number one, with the hundreds of millions of potential customers. And yet, Every day, otherwise very smart business owners and entrepreneurs keep walking through door number two and then wondering why they aren't making any sales. This is why you need to go where your customers are, not what's cool or trendy or primed to be the next big thing, but where they actually are right now. And if you're selling anything that could be sold on Amazon, then you should be selling on Amazon. Amazon has 310 million users, which for context is more people than the entire populations of Italy, England, Canada, Switzerland, Norway, and Mexico combined. And selling in the Amazon store gives small business owners 24 seven access to customers worldwide, along with the tools and resources independent sellers need to grow their business. I attended a breakout session on the advertising strategies that the top 10% of brands use in their ads, so I wanted to pass along the best and most helpful ideas to you here. The advice and recommendations that Amazon delivered were based off 1 million small businesses and calculated based on ROAS, which stands for Return on Advertising Spend. Basically, high ROAS is good, low ROAS is bad. Now, some tips were obvious but still important reminders, things like making sure to use remarketing in order to target people who have visited your business, store, or website before. Also, the use of negative keywords was brought up repeatedly, so that's a good sign that Amazon thinks it's important. If you're not familiar, think of negative keywords as the kind of terms that you don't want people to associate with your business. For example, if your business sells high-end, organic, fair trade products for premium prices, then you'd want to use negative keywords like cheap or inexpensive to make sure that your brand doesn't show up when users were searching for those terms. The point I was most excited to hear though was when the speaker brought up when not to use advertising in your business. And that deserves a point all on its own. So let's talk about that next. Advertising is often seen as a magic bullet, a secret to overnight success, getting rich quick. But here's the deal. Advertising is an accelerator, not an initiator. What this means is that it can take something that's optimized and selling well and make it sell even better. Or it can take something that's not optimized or not selling that well and make it fail even faster. This is why before you run ads and pay to promote your offer, you need to make sure your business, your products, your listings, your shipping, everything is optimized first. As great as advertising is for its ability to put your business in front of even more people, it also adds another level of complexity to the game. So you wanna make sure that your business foundation is solid first before running any advertising to it. And this leads me perfectly to the next tip, which is another point I've been preaching for years and can help you identify and diagnose your business's biggest marketing problem and opportunity. When it comes down to it, most marketing problems can be put into one of two different camps 
traffic or conversions? In other words, is your business getting enough clicks, visits, and people interested in your store, but you never seem to make enough sales? If so, you've got a conversion problem. Or do the people who click, visit, and engage with your business seem to buy more often than not, but you just can't find a way to get more people to come over and check you out in the first place? If that's the case, you've got a traffic problem. It's important to identify which problem is most prevalent in your business because trying to solve a conversion problem by just throwing more traffic at it is only going to make things worse. Likewise, trying to solve a traffic problem by further optimizing your marketing funnel and improving your customer journey isn't gonna solve anything either as what you need is more people to know that you exist and be willing to check you out in the first place. And this leads me perfectly to the next point, which was really drilled home in a breakout session on analytics and growth. We went deep into the world of metrics, analytics, and tracking in a breakout session led by Dr. Henry Cook, a senior UX researcher. Fun fact, I actually ended up in this room by mistake as I was trying to catch the other session on analytics and I messed up the room numbers. But as luck would have it, this one turned out to be pretty interesting. First off, if you ever want to find the real marketers, the data-driven, numbers-focused, profit-minded people determined to reach success, then attending a session on metrics and analytics is the secret. Like I said, we went deep in this session and the quality of questions that people were asking proved that they knew what they were doing. But to keep us on track here, I want to break things down into their most simple and usable forms, starting with a statement that if you want to start, grow, or build a business, then you need to know your numbers, period. This will help you determine exactly what's working and what's not, where your best customers are coming from, and what channels are working so you can do more of them, and which ones aren't delivering the goods so you can do less of them or fix them or cut them out completely. And when it comes to marketing metrics, there are basically way too many things that you could possibly track. So the ones that I want you to focus on for now are CLV and CAC. CLV stands for Customer Lifetime Value, and it's the number that represents how profitable a customer is to you and your business over their lifetime. This number is incredibly important to know because it's going to help guide you in figuring out how much you can spend on this next metric, CAC, which happens to stand for Customer Acquisition Cost, and it measures how much you spend to acquire a new customer. For example, if you allocate $100 to advertising and it brings in one customer, then your CAC for advertising is $100. And if you allocated $100 to email marketing, but it brings in two customers, then your CAC for email is $50. The fact is though, that the best businesses know their numbers as it allows them to make data-based decisions. Don't guess, there's no need to guess. With online and digital marketing, you've got access to pretty much every metric you could ever dream of. Next up, let's talk about the holidays, seasonal promotions, and events. Because whether your business is seasonal, year round, or a combination of both, these next few tips will help you increase your sales. One of the biggest reasons that I love doing marketing around the holiday season is that it has a natural organic urgency baked right into it. I mean, Black Friday is a day and once it's gone, it's gone. Cyber Monday is also a day, and likewise, when it's over, customers have to wait another year before it comes back around. And the same could be said for pretty much any other holiday out there. Christmas, Easter, Hanukkah, Diwali, Chinese New Year, you name it. The key then is to plan ahead and be prepared so as to maximize your opportunity to serve and sell to your customers in this time period. There were a lot of good pieces of advice shared, but I think I can sum them all up into the following three T's. Timing, topical, and tactical. First, timing. The key here is to plan ahead and make sure that you've got all of your marketing done well ahead of time. Your products in stock and supply chain ironed out so that when the rush comes, you're prepared and ready for anything. Next, topical. This has to do with updating and customizing the images, videos, and overall design aesthetics that you're presenting to align with the seasonal promotion that you're running. Easy example here, but Christmas trees for Christmas and ghosts and spiders for Halloween and fuzzy little bunny rabbits for Easter. Adorable. Then, tactics. First, you wanna make sure your best-selling gifts are highly visible, front and center. If you're gonna run paid ads, then focus on running them on your best-selling items first, your most giftable items next, and then lastly, on any excess inventory that you're trying to clear out. To attract new customers to your brand, focus on lifestyle images that reflect happy customers having a good time in an ideal environment. To bring back repeat customers or those already familiar with your brand, then focus on showing nice, clean, and clear images of your products. A couple more tips when it comes to product images. First, make sure that they're professional, high-resolution photos, and add some 
seasonal photos depending on the time of year or the event that's taking place. And also make sure to show some images with customers interacting with your product to boost sales even more. And if you'd like even more e-commerce tips to help boost your sales and grow your business, then you're definitely gonna wanna check out the video that I've got linked up right here, which is gonna give you 10 more of my top e-commerce marketing strategies. So make sure to tap or click that now, and I'll see you in there in just a second.